Hi, good morning. Wow, packed house. Some of you are really interested, I'm sure, in the topic, given you're standing up, so that's great to see. You know, it's terrific to be here, and I, I want to start with actually congratulating the Databricks team on what they've done. And if you really think about it, in a period of time that's just been so short and overnight, it's amazing the success. And that's why I'm excited to be here. Frankly, this is, in my mind, the decade of data and analytics. And I'm excited that IBM is here to participate in and contribute to what I believe has become the most important community that is going to lead all of us into the future around data, analytics, and the insight that that can bring to business. 100 innovations in 10 days. Just 30 days ago, I sponsored a Hack Spark campaign within IBM. We invited about 10,000 technical professionals, 28,000 from 10 different countries showed up. Why? Because they are interested in what this can really help unlock. They are interested to know more about what Spark can help them do with their businesses. It wasn't all technical folks. It was folks from all aspects of the business, but they see what that value is. So in just 10 days, we ended up with 100 innovations. One of them was actually in China, and it was around light rail forecasting. And the team there took a region of China that is predominantly around light rail transportation, and they deal with about 2.5 million passengers a day. And as a part of that, they took 10 years of history and were able to predict the passenger flow and the time of day within 90% accuracy. Now, that just begun, begins to unlock everything. Once they had that, then now they could turn to the timetables and say, okay, what are the optimal routes and the optimal intervals at each time of day? And then finally, it's about the business outcome, the individual. So then, with their innovation, the traveler, the passenger, could now get real-time recommendations of which trains to take so that it then optimizes their experience and gets them to their destination in the optimal amount of time. So another one around sequencing the human genome. So I know this audience is full of data people. So let's just start with the single human genome at 30 times coverage is roughly 200 gigabytes of data. Now, 20 year, 20, uh, four years ago, it cost $20,000 to sequence a single human genome. Now it's somewhere in the order of 5,000 or so. And the target is to get it to $1,000 per. But think about it. What if it was instead $50 a person? How that could transform an industry. So this team built a workbench using SQL, R, Scala, so that the, the analysts could then really analyze that genome data. But they also had a machine learning wizard so they could then dig down into the chromosomes and understand more about it. So whether or not it is earthbound or in outer space, the business outcomes are endless. Independence Blue Cross, they're located in the Philadelphia area, and they service somewhere on the order of about 2 million people regionally and about 9 million across the United States. Actually, their informatics team is renowned for what they do with data and analytics in healthcare and how they help transform healthcare. What they're doing is using Spark to analyze clinical data and scanned images of hip implants to then be able to predict who's at risk of complications. Now think about the business outcomes of that. The patient is much better off, of course, but also all aspects of the system can be much more efficient and much more cost effective. Now, we also have a proof of concept underway with NASA and the SETI Institute. And they are analyzing 100 million radio signals from the Allen Telescope Array, you know, looking for what might be some life out there somewhere. 
analyzing it to see if the signals come from the same location, even if it's over a period of years that it's separated, or different kind of characteristics. Now, this is, this is ideal for what we're talking about here, because it's about sophisticated mathematical models that can help really tease out those faint signals and then those machine learning algorithms that really bring to bear, how do you get rid of the noise? How do you get rid of the interference? So we'll see. Maybe next year we'll be talking about Spark has helped us find life in outer space. Now, Spark is really good at large data. And it's really good at large data at speed. But I want to talk to you a little bit about what I think it's so powerful for. And that is really to be able to have universal access to all data and to be able to do it in what is a radically simplified approach. Something that now helps all of us put intelligence into the applications and the systems. Everything from those popular applications to the Internet of Things. And that's why we're calling it the Analytics Operating System. Now, to become all that we can be, we all know. It's about how do we expand out the technology, how do we grow and develop skills, and how do we have a community that is really innovating in and around Spark. I'm pleased to say that IBM is open sourcing our system ML technology. We are committed to educating one million data scientists and data engineers worldwide on Spark and the surrounding concepts. And we are establishing a Spark Technology Center right here in San Francisco because this is where the, the heart of the community really is. Now, just to share a little bit of the secret sauce around System ML, I'm sure many of you deal with you've got a great algorithm and now you get ready to use it. And because of where the data is or the systems, all of a sudden now you spend a lot of time tuning that. System ML is about dynamically optimizing the, and compiling it and distributing it so that you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about it. System ML takes care of using the resources that are available and understanding the characteristics and location of the data so that you can focus on the algorithm, the thing that's really going to help bring the decisions and the insight to life. The momentum in IBM is very strong. You've seen some of it in things that we've talked about in the press today. We've already started. We have as a part of our Big Insights for Apache Hadoop offering, we have Spark support in that. We have over 30 research projects that are underway. We have consulting teams that are working with clients today enterprise clients today with their business problems and how to leverage Spark to really unlock that value. But that's just the beginning. We're here to say that it's time for us to be a stronger member of this community. I really do think it, it starts and stops with the community, and it means that we have to provide what we can to help that. But then we also need to leverage it in what we can bring to clients. So it's about how we can take the innovations that are around the Spark community and pull those into IBM's solutions and offerings, how we can tie to things like power systems or the mainframe, and really open up that universal access to data. So our approach and our commitment is to help accelerate the adoption of Spark. In this decade that is defined by data and analytics, we're absolutely confident that Spark is the platform, and we are thrilled to be a part of the community. If you'd like, please join us tonight at Galvanize. We're going to have a party there. We're going to show some of the innovations that are underway, including the Hack Spark winner that was the genomics project. With that, thank you very much. <laughs>